Hello, my name is David Clark. I'm the Managing Director of DVC, and I'm going to take you on a short guide through the new features of Premiere Pro CC. So let's just start the program up. Probably the biggest change with Premiere Pro CC is how you actually pay Adobe for the software. They've gone over to a subscription model where you pay them so much per month to have the software rather than pay them an amount of money outright. Now, we're not going to go over the pros and cons of that here. We're going to concentrate on the program itself why you'd actually want to use Premiere Pro CC and what are the new features they've got inside of it. After starting Premiere Pro, this is the first thing you'll see, which is a kind of regular welcome screen. It's changed slightly, but pretty much the same as before. You can open up an existing project or you can start a new one. You'll notice here there's a little tick box to show the welcome screen. If you untick that, then it goes straight into Premiere and doesn't show you the welcome screen. One of the small little changes you've got. Looking at the program itself, there's no sort of huge revolutionary feature that's going to make you want to run out and get the program. But there's a lot of small changes which add up to a much better workflow and a much nicer way of working. So things like this, don't show the welcome screen, several others which I'll show you as we go through. You'll also notice here there's this sync settings stuff at the top here. You can do this actually when you're inside the program or you can do that from the start screen. With Premiere Pro CC you no longer have a serial number for the program. The program is actually activated by your Adobe ID. It's got a few advantages. First of all you can actually save your basic Premiere settings in your Adobe ID. So you can set up your own preferences, how you like the windows laid out, various things like that. And then if you just click this button, it'll sync those settings to the web. And then when you go onto another computer with your Premiere on it, then you can click the button again and the new system will have Premiere set up how you like it. You can even go to a system which isn't yours and sync it up to your account. So imagine my name was Chris at DVC. I could click on here and then sync up my Premiere to Chris's settings. So just a nice way of being able to cart your settings around with you. Now, so you can do that from here or you can do that when you're inside the program. And of course, you don't have to do it. You don't have to use any of the cloud-based stuff that they've got in the Creative Cloud if you don't want to. But some of it, like this, is quite nice. Anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a new project. And we get your new project dialog box. Pretty much the same as in previous versions of Premiere. They've moved things around a bit, so the Mercury playback setting is now at the top, but it's pretty much the same. The biggest difference you get with CC is on the scratch disks. They've added in a new one project auto save. Now normally when Premiere auto saves projects the copies go next to the project. If what happens is that particular hard drive dies you're going to lose your backups and the originals. Now you have the option to put the auto saves somewhere else. So in this case I'll just go into my computer and make up a folder and now whenever it auto saves it puts it onto a different drive. So if the worst thing that can happen happens, your hard drive dies, at least you've got a backup of the project somewhere else. It's not a backup of all the media, just the project. But the project is your edit. It's everything you spent all the time doing to refine the edit. OK, I'm going to click on OK and I'm going to get into Premiere. And here we are into the main interface of Premiere Pro CC. If you've been using CS6, you'll say that looks pretty familiar. What you might have noticed is it didn't prompt you to make up a sequence. I've got a big empty timeline window, but I've got no tracks in it because I've not made any sequences. Again, small change with Premiere Pro CC is that whenever you start a new project, you don't have any sequences. The idea is you're going to bring some footage in and then you'll probably make a footage out of the sequence rather than make a sequence first. On the subject of opening up projects, let's have a quick look at the preferences where you can see a new one at the top here at startup, show the welcome screen or open the most recent project. If you've got it set to that, then when you next go back into Premiere, it'll go straight away and open your most recent project, as opposed to showing you the welcome screen. Now I'm going to start this project by bringing in some footage. So I'm going to go to the media browser, which is the best way of bringing in card-based footage. And I'm going to go to some AVCHD footage, which I have copied onto the computer. And here you can see the media browser that was introduced in CS6, where you get a little thumbnail of all the clips that you've got in the folder, and you can drag your mouse over them and you can see a picture. So as I'm dragging the mouse there, you can see I'm scrubbing through the picture. And then I can just select a whole bunch of clips and import them. Or if I want to bring in a whole folder of clips, just find whatever folder it is that you want to bring in, and then right click on that and say import, and it brings in that whole folder of footage. It then pops up with a message saying, eh, some of that stuff isn't things I can load. Yeah, fair enough. 
but having imported a folder that way, you can see the footage ends up in the folder, which is nice. Premiere is now conforming some of my footage. Well, my footage here is AVCHD, so it needs to be conformed. That's where it changes the sound into something more usable. Does that exactly the same as it did in previous versions. And then I can pop the project into icon mode and I can hover scrub across these clips as well.